Hey, there we go. Good morning, friends. Good afternoon. Good evening. Whatever time it might be where you are out there. Welcome back to the live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz. This, this is C Sharp with C Sharp Fritz. This is a beginner friendly episode where we're going to chat about, about things that, that are going to help you as a C Sharp beginner get started on your journey with .NET, become a better programmer and, and talk with all kinds of folks and chat about all the great things that are happening in .NET so that hopefully you become a bit, a bit more comfortable with, with whatever topic it is we're talking about. And today, today we're going to talk about one of my favorite features of, of .NET. Um, and I say that because it's also available in, in the three main programming languages. We're going to talk about the Language Integrated Query or link as it's called L I N Q. That's what we're going to be talking about. Look, and it's so sunny in Phil. It's always so sunny in Philadelphia. Uh, great to see that out there. Let me say hello to all of our friends in the chat rooms. YouTube and Twitch are both online. So good to see you, friends. My goodness, look at all the folks in here. Oh my! Wow. Uh, hang on. Let me break out. I, I gotta get, get the chat in front of me here. My goodness. Um, so much going on. Over there in the chat room. Where is it? I need my, my chat app in front of me here so I can see. Um, my goodness. Good morning to Paul in Tasmania. Um, Abdul in Guinea uh, in West Africa. Hello, hello. Uh, Caleb in Ghana. Good to see you. Uh, taking a look over on Twitch. My goodness, so many folks on Twitch today. Charles Galuli is here. DJ Squared. Nitro Evil. Good afternoon to you. Bus One Hero says, Link is awesome. I agree wholeheartedly. Hello. Uh, is that Encasco Coder? Hello. Hello. Leap Geek agrees that Link is awesome. I am Gecko is here. Um, what's the difference? Leap Geek with a quick question about the difference between I queryable and I enumerable. We'll talk about that today. Let's, let's make sure we talk about that today. If I don't get to it, 
Remind me, we'll get back to that one. Um, good morning to you, Eternal Dev Coder in Central Missouri. Uh, M Granger 231, hello to you. Leet Geek, hello world. Anonymous PHP, good morning to you in Brazil. Um, uh, Mark, it's so good to see you in Bulgaria. Midori Fukami, hey, great to see you with a Pikachu emote over there. Uh, Chris Jones, hello, hello. Tinker Fu in Switzerland. Oh my goodness, so many great friends here today. Russell in South Africa, Talha from Turkey. Oh my goodness. It's great to hear folks from, from so many different continents. We met, we heard North Americans, Europeans. We heard some folks, I think we heard some folks from, from South America. We heard some, fo some folks from Africa. Great to hear everybody tuning in. Eggsy's here. Uh, Nalian, is that how you pronounce that? Good to see you. Um, hello. Queensy from, is that Czech Republic? If I, if I know my... My flag's there. Dinesh, hello to you in India. Uh, I hope you're having a good evening. My goodness. Uh, right? It's a little bit later there in India. I'm different hat on the Visual Studio channel this week. I know it's not a programming hat, but I, I'm i still team Microsoft hat, right? Uh, Philippines hat. Got it. Thank you, Queensy. It, oh, I, you know what? I, I, didn't see the, I didn't see the sun on the side. It, other way, right without that, it, I think it is Czech Republic. Uh, Kwong, good to see you. Um, so, right, I still team Microsoft, but Minecraft I saw this hat last week, last week at the, at the store and, and it's got a leather brim on it. Really cool. And, and you can see the reflection of the leather, uh, the leather Minecraft badge up there. I thought that was really cool with all the pickaxes, axes, swords, uh, really cool stuff. So I thought that, that, that's, that's a hat that speaks to me. <laughs> so I had to pick that up. Uh, Abdul asking, please make tutorials for C-sharp desktop and cloud. Um, we're working on tutorials on all kinds of content. We're holding off a little bit on desktop content so that we can have something that's in really good shape with .NET MAUI. But keep an eye out. We're, we're making more and more um, tutorials. There's going to be great stuff there. Uh, is it Hawkar uh, Mohammed in Iraq? Welcome. So good to see you. Sh uh, Shonawaz in Pakistan. Thank you for joining us. Hello, hello. Uh, so great to see so many folks there. Um, you like F Sharp, Paul? That's great. Uh, nothing wrong with F Sharp. Definitely folks can check that out. We had a full day .NET Conf event back in, was it July? About F Sharp. You can check out all the videos from that event on the YouTube channel youtube.com slash dot net and check a look take a look at the playlist for dot net conf focus on f sharp and there's real great beginner sessions there the best my, my favorite part of that day and I, I was fortunate enough to be hosting this part um we had don sign the inventor of f sharp teaching uh guido van russen the the gentleman who invented python the the two of them talking together about about f sharp and here's don teaching Guido F sharp, literally folks who not just understand programming languages, but know how to make programming languages. They know the ins and outs of these things. And they're talking about, about the internals and, and how you teach programming languages and how various parts relate to each other. Really, really great stuff. It was excellent. Backbreaker, uh, buenos dias to you in Mexico. So good to see you. CMR, we will talk about why link in just a moment. Uh, to Mega, hello to you in Winnipeg. Good to see you. Uh, Luthfi in Indonesia. Can't wait for the .NET Maui tutorial, says K on YouTube. I I agree with you, and I think um, I think we're going to be much happier with them um, as they're as they're going to be released as we see more and more content released over the next few months. Um, getting ready for for .NET Maui. It's going to take a little bit longer to get there. Um, and for those of you who watch my channel over on Twitch, you know that as part of our St. Jude fundraiser, I, I raise money all the time on my Twitch channel we, for various charities, and we raise money for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. As part of that, um, we, we reached a goal where I promised to teach a full-day .NET Maui workshop live on Twitch. That'll be coming up probably later this fall, maybe even early 2022, as we make sure that .NET MAUI is, is stable and ready to go before we teach that. So 
Um, why Link, since SQL is good enough, asks, uh, asks Min. You know what, Min? Very good question. Why, why use Link? Link has, has several different usages to it, and we'll, we'll talk about that. And I'll show you. I'm actually going to show you how you can use Link against a CSV file, a comma-separated value file, right? You might save a, a CSV from Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets or whatever uh, spreadsheet program you're using, and, and when you save out a comma-separated value file, a CSV, you, you get a file that has all these commas separating uh, columns and rows in a table. Well, what if we could query that quickly from our code? Ah, now we're talking. Now we're talking. Maybe the Clip Talk, uh, Clip Talk app after .NET Maui. Good to see you, Rigel. Um, we're going to try and do that a little bit earlier because Clip Talk is built in Blazor. Clip Talk, K-L-I-P-T-O-K. That's an application that I've been building with Blazor, with .NET running on Azure. I've been building that for the last almost a year now, uh, live on my Twitch channel. Really great stuff that you can check out over there. Um, hello to you, uh, Zipsonics in Poland. Hello, hello. Ordinary Boy asks, can we use Link against NoSQL? Um, there are providers for, I believe, for Cosmos um, so that you can use Entity Framework and Link against Cosmos tables. It's possible. Um, I haven't spent a lot of time with it. I spend most of my time using, using Link against either in-memory data, uh, relational databases, um, or actually, you can use Link against NoSQL. What am I thinking? The database that we've been using on my channel, RavenDB, is phenomenal with Link. So, absolutely. Blazor for Maui, yes. Is that something like Electron? A eh, little bit. A little bit like that, Kay. Hello to Amin in Iran. Let me finish greeting some folks, and and we'll wrap up our opening chat here. Get over to, to our uh, workstation over there and start talking about today's topic. Uh, Bradfield. Greetings to you in Cape Town, South Africa. What level would this stream be in terms of difficulty? We're, this is very beginner focused. Um, happy to take any questions. And if they're a little bit further along, if they're a little more advanced, I will delay. I will uh, offer to take that offline because I want to make sure that the beginners, folks who aren't familiar with C Sharp, haven't any experience with .NET, that they get their questions asked in a, in a very non-intimidating um, place so that Everybody feels welcome. Everybody feels like they can they can talk and ask their questions, and we can have a good time learning together. Um, let me just check one thing here. Um, well, that's interesting. That's not what I expected. Okay. Um, hello to you. Is that uh, uh, Shuridan? Is that you pronounce that in Uzbekistan? Technavi in India. Hello, hello. Um, avoiding link and reactive extensions. Sorry, that's not the topic for today. We are focused on link today. Is there a way when using link with the SQL database to capture the SQL command that is sent to the SQL server to get the query plan to verify? Asks Walter. Yes, you can do that. Um, but that's more of an entity framework thing. And I'm not going to talk about entity framework today. I probably should add an entity framework session here at some point. Um, there is, there is a way to turn on logging in Entity Framework, starting with Entity Framework Core. In Entity Framework Core 5.0 and later, there is a logger you can turn on for it. Um, if you search the documentation, I'm sure you can find that. There's also a way to do it with Entity Framework 6 and earlier that's built and works on .NET Framework. Um, I don't have the syntax off the top of my head. It's one of those things that you set it and forget it. You you configure it, you put it in one place in a file, and you never come back to it again. It just works properly for you. But take a look for Entity Framework Core. Take a look at how you can inject an iLogger um, into the configuration. I haven't quite done it recently, but it's there. You can do it. How you doing there? Frackberg over on Twitch. Mikhail, good to see you. Um, with a question about Razor and Blazor, I'll answer that quickly because it's a quick answer. Um, Razor is a markup syntax that you can use to mark up HTML with C Sharp. Um, and Blazor is a complete user interface framework that uses the Blazor templating technology to generate user interfaces um, on a server, on a web server, on a client, 
using WebAssembly and coming up with .NET MAUI inside of desktop and mobile applications using Blazor hybrid technologies. Um, explain the difference between link to SQL and link to entities. Link to SQL does not exist anymore. That has been deprecated. That is no longer a thing. Folks who talk about link to SQL, that's not a thing. Link to entities, iQueryable, iNumerable will cover. Um, link to entities, I iQueryable and iNumerable, absolutely. Hello, Basoy in the Philippines. Um, let me see here. Any basic terms, words you need to learn before starting? No. Um, uh, if the stream is nothing for you, then okay. Have a good one. Take care. Minecraft hat. That's right. How you doing, PC nerd? Jeremy Von Hatton. Hello, hello. Jens, good to see you. Um, can you use the iLogger through DI? Yes, you can. Um, for that entity framework injection. Saulo, hello to you in Brazil. My Twitch channel, real easy. Um to get to that is twitch.tv slash c sharp fritz there you go matt's valiant in pittsburgh there you go not exactly nearby but in the same state good to see you um blazer taking a long time first load make it slow down make it slow down make it make it faster um it needs to install that's just the way it is you when you publish a Blazor application, it trims and links and should make things much, much smaller so that it's aggressively cached, um, WebAssembly cached in the browser. You're going to find <clears throat> when you do publish, it's significantly faster. You can actually check out a website that I've built. Let me, I can actually bring it up over here. Um, let's go to the Hats website over here uh we'll head over to the code and bring that up i'm going to get some music playing in the background also there we go there's my hats website check this out hats.csharpfritz.com this is a blazer web assembly uh website that you can check out it uses link live in your browser to search through and present the list of hats here so you can search the list of hats. The source code is available. There's a link up top there in the middle. Um, <clears throat> but you can certainly check out and you can search for things. I believe the Minecraft hat is on here. There it is. There's the Minecraft hat. You can see I just got it here in September. There you go. But this is all WebAssembly and it should load pretty quickly in your browser because it's a very small application. <clears throat> when you're running Blazor in development mode, it does take a bit longer because it doesn't optimize. It doesn't do the linking, the querying um, to compress things and make it smaller in the browser. The goal is to give you a faster um, interaction as a developer. Good morning to you, uh, Raleigh Rolls in Florida. Louis Kyrie in Kenya. That wasn't supposed to be on. Um, those things above me aren't supposed to be on. Hang on, let's turn those off. That's, I didn't even think I was going to be on this scene today. I didn't even turn it on. Uh, get rid of those. There we go. Um, uh, Bodanvix in Ukraine. Uh, Kali 0x0. Good afternoon to you in Russia. Mitko in Macedonia. Hello, hello. Hey, Fuel Snabel. Um... All right. I exist, therefore I think. Hello to you in India. Um, you have a WPF app with a C-sharp code base and you need to port it to Linux. Any mature um, any mature GUI framework that you can use. Avalonia is what people have been talking about to migrate WPF to be cross-platform. However, .NET MAUI will get you there and you'll get full support from the Microsoft team. That won't get you on Linux, but it'll get you there and there's folks building a community hosted um .NET maui framework um do, 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 do. are the hats included with the microphone <laughs> uh no uh, uh all right hello to uh neil ash in india uh my goodness i'm not sure how to pronounce that in wisconsin will microsoft or ordinary boy asks will microsoft reduce the size of blazer's web assembly Always, they're constantly trying to make it smaller, and it's 40% smaller now and faster 
with .NET 6. It's getting even faster and better. Gandalo, hello to you in Paris. Welcome. If I reset the search, there they are. Um, you're working with Java and C, says Chaitanya. Mostly during your bachelor's. Any special tips for, for getting started with C Sharp? C Sharp is an object-oriented language. Um, spend some time, take a look at it in, like we are today, in .NET Notebooks. And I think you'll have a, a really great time um, learning about and tinkering with C Sharp. Will there be a C Sharp 9 course? There's plenty of those around. We did a C Sharp 9 session in November last year. You can find that on the YouTube playlist. Uh, YouTube.com slash dot net slash. Uh, uh, well, it's called C Sharp with C Sharp Fritz out there. You'll find that there. The SQL-like syntax still work in modern link? Yep. Is there any difference between method calls and SQL-like syntax? Nope. Nope. And we're going to talk about that today. Um, it's too bad Microsoft won't dedicate resources to Maui on Linux. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Let me go back to full face chat. Talk about that. Here's the deal too, Mega. Um, literally the team is building it for four runtimes, four, four operating systems, four different processors, iOS, Android, Mac, and PC. And they've had to delay it twice. If they were to drop a fifth in there that doesn't have a standard user interface framework, because when you talk about building a user interface framework for Linux, well, does it run on KDE? Does it run on GNOME? What does it run on? What's the user interface framework it's going to run on? That becomes a bit of a challenge. And the number of folks who use user interface frameworks on Linux is significantly orders of magnitude less than Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. Just not a priority. Not something that is going to reach paying Microsoft customers, to be frank. So if there are folks who say, yes, here's what we need it for and why, the team has been very open. Give us a reason. Give us some justification that we can go back and we can say, yes, we need to spend money on this. Because Microsoft's a business. They need to spend money on things that will keep and attract customers. So, but GDK, GTK is not going to get everybody. You're going to have the same groups of folks say, oh, it doesn't work on our platform. It can't do it. Two hours. We'll be here for two hours. An alarm going off? No, I can't hear an alarm going off. Um, the music's a little bit quiet today. I can. It's usually a little bit quieter. All right. Do I think the fragmentation of the Linux ecosystem is part of the reason why? No. It's there are magnitude orders of magnitude less folks that use and want to develop for Linux than there are develop user interface applications for Linux. And and quite frankly, the the customers aren't there for it. Um, it, it if there's a, a good story around that, if there's a good group of customers that need it, they will justify and they will build it. But right now, they need to get the first four frameworks built and delivered. Um, if I have any helpers, can they post some links to Microsoft, other Microsoft channels on Twitch? Um, you, so of course on Twitch, you can go to twitch.tv slash visual studio. You can also go to twitch.tv slash Microsoft developer and you'll find folks there. And of course I mentioned my channel earlier. Um, how often do I do these streams? I'm on this stream every Monday. I, you will find me on Tuesdays, Thursdays, typically on Sundays over on my channel, streaming, teaching about Blazor, .NET, C Sharp, Azure. Um, what is the link alternative for Golang? No idea. I don't use Go. Um, all right. Yes, there are community con contributions and they're making the APIs. .NET Maui, all of .NET is completely open source and folks can interact and build whatever you want with that with that source code it's available for you it's out on github it's free for folks that want to contribute and want to build a a runtime for whatever operating system whatever interface all right 
I've got my coffee. I'm feeling good. Let's get ready for today's session. I'm going to switch microphones. There we go. Um, and good. My sound levels are good. You're receiving 1080 at 60 frames a second. You should be. I'm broadcasting at that. Yes, indeed. Um, it makes the code and the text nice and crisp so that everybody can see it. And hopefully those of you that are watching on phones and tablets, hopefully you'll be able to see all of the code and you'll be able to see, see this. Uh, right, this thing. Uh, plenty well here. You'd like to build a C-sharp application on Linux OS? Is there a free IDE available? Uh, take a look at Visual Studio Code. Um, so, we are very Minecrafty today. All right, let me get ready. I think I've got all my stuff together here. Let me grab my phone. We're going to head over to the full set and, uh, and have a good time here getting ready here. Um... The, the mic, my normal mic that I'm using here, this is a Shure SMB7. Uh, I'm sorry, SM7B. Um, this is the headset that I have. Oh my goodness, why am I forgetting? This is, no, it's not Plantronics. Who makes this one? That's right, this is the Audio Technica BPHS1. All right, let me get ready. Let's head over to the other scene. And uh, start talking about Visual Studio Code. Start talking about Link together. So I'll see you over there in just a second. All right. Changing scenes. Heading over to the other machine. Let's see. What do we got here? What do we got? Hello. I'm over here now. And put my phone down so we can see what's going on. How you doing there? Um, I just installed new version of Visual Studio Code here. Uh, yeah, sure, go ahead, save that. Clear all the outputs. We're gonna have some fun today. Talking about now my 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 scene my uh hmm hmm this didn't update behind me. Give me one second here. That's weird. That's weird. Uh. Not gonna lie, um, wasn't expecting that. There it goes. Now we're talking. All right. See that I don't I don't have a producer here that can run over and manage what's going on behind the scenes with uh, with everything here. Let me see. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. You'd love for me to give a weather forecast on this scene? <laughs> well, that's a thing. That's totally a thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, give me one second here. Let me do this. I'm going to um, just shift chat slightly. There we go. All right. Quick pop open zoom.earth. <laughs> So we are here, we're using uh, the C-Sharp with C-Sharp Fritz uh, repository. Let me open up and show you where we are on the GitHub. On the GitHub, we are at github.com slash C-Sharp Fritz slash C-Sharp with C-Sharp Fritz. There you go right there. And if, if you're out there and, and you're browsing, you want to follow along. If you're watching the recording and you want to run through these exercises in your browser, um, you can press, um, if you're signed in here, uh, I'm not going to sign in. Um, I'm not going to go through that because I need the two factor and all that. You can press, uh, while you're signed in, you can press period while you're looking at this. It'll open up all the exercises in Visual Studio Code in your browser. And you'll be able to go through and run some of the code that we're looking at here today. We're in the notebooks folder over here and we are looking at Notebook 0106 link. You see it right there. This contains a bunch of samples talking about link language integrated query that we're going to be doing. We're going to be talking about around C sharp and, and how you can work with collections, query collections. They might be in a database somewhere. They might be in memory lie or they might be on disk and we'll see how you can do that with a uh, like I said, a comma-separated value file. We'll take a look at that today as well. Um, so, 
this is the one that we're going to be in. You can clone and run this locally. You can share it with your uh, with your user group. There's a bunch of samples in here. Share it with your friends at work. There's all kinds of content in here. I want to make sure that you're aware of, you check out, and get comfortable with as you continue your .NET journey. You like the shirt today? Mighty Mix Boxing Gym from Philadelphia. Love it. What theme am I using in, in Visual Studio Code? I'm using the default dark. Um, if there's some hot new technology blowing in from the West, it'll arrive in November. Well, yes. Um, we're, um, we're also uh, uh, looking at doing some fun with Chroma Key, with, with green screen at .NET Conf in November. Um, is C Sharp Notebooks similar to SQL scripts? No. C Sharp Notebooks are just like Python notebooks, Jupyter notebooks. Um, they run great in Visual Studio Code, like I am, like I'm doing here, on on my Surface Book, um, and and they'll work on Windows, Mac, and Linux, just like all of .NET. You can program on your favorite operating system. Um, so, Microsoft Ignite is coming, but more importantly. .NET Conf is the week after. That's when you're going to see um, all of our programming content, all of our content for developers. Um, yes, .NET Interactive Notebooks like this, and we'll get in and we'll we'll talk about and we'll work with this a little bit today. Quick programming note while I've got you here, friends, while you're watching. Um, this is September 27th. For those of you that watch me on my my uh, re regular Twitch stream. Um, October starts later this week. Next week, our, our stream next week, we will be in October. And I like to observe October as a theme month. I like to observe October as Ubuntober. That means all month long, we will not be using Windows. We will be using Ubuntu Linux. All month long, programming C Sharp live here on the stream, we've been using Windows. We use uh, Mac in May, because May is for Macs. And in November, um, in October, we use Ubuntu Linux so that we can share, we can show that .NET works everywhere. Everybody can use .NET on their favorite operating system. So next week, starting next week and for the next few weeks after that, when you tune in, when you look at the recordings, you're gonna find me programming in Ubuntu Linux. All right, so I hope you uh, hope you join us. I hope I hope you enjoy um, the the shift in operating system. So we show not just Windows but Linux development with C Sharp as well. Um, is there a mod that will combine Twitch and YouTube chat? Uh, I'm using Restream to do that, Tim, um, but it will not publish chat to the other platform. Are these notebooks the ones introduced in the Learn to Code pack, which was released about three to four months ago? Um, the are similar they because uh, they took my notebooks and um, they, I, I donated my notebooks and they, they took them adopted them and published them so they're not quite the same mine are a little bit different um, is this stream going to be available on YouTube later asks Frank on Twitch yes um, Ubuntu on the metal without Windows subsystem for Linux um, yes, I have an Ubuntu uh, laptop that I use from the folks at kfocus.com. Um, all right. That's right, Exe, on my fancy Linux native laptop. All right. Here we go. So we're going to talk about link and extension methods today. And uh, I even put the Super C Sharp logo here. Uh, so link is a collection of methods and and language features that allow you to interact with collections of data. And in our last session, we focused a little bit on link to objects. So if if you didn't see it, we were talking about collections here last week, and we briefly dipped into link right here. You can you can go back, you can check this out, and we talked briefly about link with collections, generic collections of objects. Now, for those of you that weren't there, not familiar with it, a generic collection is a way for you to describe a collection in memory with .NET that has a generic type constraint. There's 
some type that every element in that collection belongs to. In this example, I created my own collection called a Fritz set, and it has a generic type of card. So we're creating a deck of cards, these card objects. And you see, I put just a handful of, of cards into the deck using this special collection that I created called a Fritz set. More about that as we get started with today's notebook. Taking a look back at chat here. Um, I really appreciate that kind of recognition for Linux. Well, thank you. These notebooks are available now. Gutierrez Dev. You can certainly go find them. Um, thank you, Space Shot, for the link. Appreciate that. Um, that'll bring you here. You can clone and run these locally. There's even a... Um, there's even a Docker container that will run here locally, so you can open them up, and without installing anything, they'll just work. They'll work great on your machine, okay? Um, so let's, let's set some groundwork here. Let's put together a couple of types for us to use through the rest of today's session that will uh, be useful, okay? So... Uh, you saw we had a card type defined out there um, in our previous session. So I'm going to redefine the card type here. So public card, right? So here's my constructor. I'll take some sort of definition as to what a card is. And these are standard playing cards. These aren't Pokemon or Magic the Gathering cards. These are standard playing cards, 52 cards, uh, four different suits, 18 ranks. So we're gonna be able to define with a constructor here, here's what type of card it is. And every card has a rank property. It has a rank value that turns it into a number that will help us with sorting later, right? When you're playing poker, you're playing blackjack. Um, we, you can see here, I added a little bit of logic going all the way across here that says, well, the value of these face, here are the face cards and some default values for them. And the value that we're going to return is, well, if it's if it's a face card, we're gonna return these values so that the ace is worth 14, right? 13, 12, 11, so that it's, right, those are higher value than the numeric cards. So when we're making a hand, aces are high. They're the highest value cards that, that we can compare, okay? And of course, we have a suit to every card. We have a suit property, and uh, actually, that's a field. That's fine. But we'll be able to have a two-string method here so we can get some notation for our cards so we can see them. And uh, we'll just put rank suit. This way, we can have an A dash H, that's the ace of hearts, right? Or a nine dash D, that's the nine of diamonds, okay? So very simple card class that we can work with here. And I, I put in a, a little method here just to verify, is this legal card notation? Just to give us, you know, here's what a validation might look like. And I added a, um, a operator here. This is something we haven't talked about. I added, this is an Im implicit operator. This allows you to cast from a string to a card type. So I can put a string into a collection and it'll turn it into a card for me implicitly, as opposed to explicitly, where I have to say, hey, make this into a card and some other code will execute. Um, finally, here's my Fritz set, that collection we created previously. This is an I enumerable of T. Now, we had a question earlier about what's the, diff the difference between an I enumerable and an I queryable. I'll explain the difference after I show you the rest of this set. So, uh, the rest of this class. So, I just set up an inner list object here. I implemented the interface, which has an enumer get enumerator method, two of them here. And I'm just going to return uh, from the internal list. I created an add class here, an add method here that when you insert 
a card into the list. Look, it puts it at a random location. Give, give me a new random number, take the next, uh, new random seed here, give me the next random number, and we're going to place it somewhere in the deck at that location right there. Okay? And we'll return the deck, the, the set at that point. And I also added a shuffle method here that does a little bit of reordering here. And we'll see about what that order by does in just a little bit. All right. Um, finally, at the end of this code to initialize things, and I'm going to come to chat in just a second, I defined a, a variable called the deck. So I get a deck of cards, and I loaded all 52 cards here. And you can see how I, I just quickly wrote the deck dot add in each one of the cards, right? You see aces here, and there's, there's fives and nines and queens, okay? So it, they're all here. There's 52 cards that are added. And, and I said, you know what? Shuffle the deck a couple times. So the deck shuffle, 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 shuffle. It's it's effectively doing the truffle shuffle at this point. Um, so it's all mixed up there. And um, we previously talked about, hey, well, let's create let's create a card that's that for I believe is Priyanx. We'll call this the Joker card. And you know, if let's create a card named Joker. And if we say display Joker card, right? Run that. Notice it comes up null, right? Um, because when it goes to convert that here, if it's not a legal notation, Joker isn't a, a legal card here, um, it's going to return null. Otherwise, it would have returned that other card. So if I decide to say, well, return this as the uh, Jeff of Hearts, right? Then uh, why didn't it do that? Why didn't it do that? Why am I not getting now? Now that's now that's annoying me. Um, new card. It should have converted it. There it is. But if that was a joker, I get an error. It should have tried to convert it, and I don't know why it didn't. That it should have converted, and it didn't, and I don't quite know why. Hmm. Is it because it's not a lowercase? I bet it's because it's not lowercase. There it is. That's why. That's why. Um, yeah, that needs to be case insensitive. Um, all right. Case sensitive. All right. So now we have our deck of cards. We have this all defined. Now we can actually start. We've got some data, and this data is all in memory that we can work with. Let me go to chat, and then we'll talk about I enumerable and I queryable, and go from there. So, scrolling down from chat, how you doing there, One Punch Mac? New Fritz card game confirmed. <laughs> Gutierrez Dev, hello, uh, Frank. What ask? What are some free online SQL services with small small size and small amount of data to practice a link with an online database? Well. You're not looking for online SQL at that point. You're looking for online services. Um, I'm trying to think. We've used the uh, World Bank before because they have a great service available for uh, converting data types. Uh, I'm sorry, converting currency types. Um, and they'll report that data to you. We've used that before. Um, you're watching us on Twitch or YouTube they both have free services available that you can connect to and you can query and search for videos, channels, and all kinds of things. But you're not talking about SQL. You're, like I said, you're talking about APIs. You're not necessarily running SQL statements against those. Different. You're not going to get a free database that somebody just makes available to you 
for querying as an API with an open database port across the internet. Too much of a security concern there. Kind of have a hard time grasping collection definitions of things like collections. What can I do to understand things better? Well, I'll, let me take a second and and explain a little bit here. Um, do I have? I think the only decks of cards that I have here are Magic: The Gathering cards. Um, I yeah, those are the only those are the only decks that I see here. I'll use one of these anyway. And this one has covers. Um, <laughs> does this one have covers? No, it doesn't. All right. When you think about a collection, I like using the deck of cards metaphor. Um, because I think it's something every one of us can can relate to. Now, this is this is a deck. This isn't a standard deck of playing cards. Um, I should have grabbed a deck of playing cards. There are some downstairs, but I don't have any in here um so right when you think about a deck of cards right you've of course got all these cards and right that's a collection right and of course you you're going to create a subset of that collection that is the the cards in your hand now right that's a collection it's a group of of data points that you're going to work with so it's a collection now there are different types of collections, right? You have a ra we talked about this last time, but I'll re recap briefly. You have arrays, you have lists, you have dictionaries, and those are different ways that you can interact with your data inside that collection, that that group of related data points. Now, folks will make the the correlation between a collection and a database table because you'll want to query your collection the same way you want to query a database. And there are tools like nHibernate, Hibernate on Java, um, Entity Framework on .NET, Dapper, that will help make those database tables available to you as collections that you can query with Link. We'll see how you can use Link to query collections today. But this becomes The working with the collection, working with like a, a set of cards, is is easy for a lot of folks to relate to and understand. Now, we we talked about previously that not only can you have a list, but there's things like a queue and a stack. And a stack is very much like a, a set of cards where the the items that I put last on top, right? So I put items on top of the stack are the first ones out. So the last card that I put on is the first card off. That's a stack. A queue is just like a queue you might find at, at the coffee shop or, or movie theater or wherever you might be, be going out um, where you need to stand in line. First person in line is the first person to be serviced. Last person in line, last person to be serviced. That's a queue. So these are different things that we can work with in our data, in our code, to better present and represent how we want to interact with our collections. Now, we're going to start to query and change the order of things and change the shape of things in our collections so that it more closely matches what we want to, the outcome to be in our code. So, the sample we're using today, for the most part, we have some samples a little bit further down. We're going, we're going to be talking about weather data, but we're going to talk about standard playing cards today because that's a small collection of about 50, 52 data points that we're going to work with and we'll see and, and it'll make sense to us how how they, those data points relate to each other. So I, I hope taking that quick few seconds, quick minute or two there for Chaitanya on YouTube, I hope that helped. Um, lots of love from India. Thank you, Amitya. Appreciate that. So, yep. Let's talk about uh, I enumerable and I queryable. Let me talk about that in just a second. J is not a valid rank. Yes, it is. J is J is for Jeff or Jack. I don't like Jack. It's it just says J on the card. It's a Jeff of hearts. That's what it is. Um, let me see here. Yeah, retrieving currency quotes. There you go. Thank you, Jens, over on on Twitch. Uh, you love the artwork on the Magic the Gathering cards? I do too. And, and you know what? I have a couple cards that were drawn by, uh, painted 
by uh, Bob Ross, the uh, famous painter, t television painter. Um, let me see here. Stacks are last in, first out. Cues are first in, first out. That's right, Chaitanya. Yep, yep. Um, all right. So let's talk about this. Let's let's talk about I enumerable versus I queryable. We talked briefly about I enumerable last time, and and you see up here the collection that I defined is I enumerable. It has the I enumerable interface applied to it. Well, what does I enumerable mean? I enumerable is an interface that you can apply to your collections that you can you can reference and request that says this is a forward only collection. It's a collection of data that we can iterate over going forward through the collection. Now, there are link methods what like we're going to see today that will allow you to reformat, query that content with things like a where statement or any or all methods that allow you to query and get some data back from that. But I enumerable is in memory and when you go to interact with it, if you interact with it using standard code, is a forward only collection. You need to reset your position to the beginning again if you want to go through it again. You can't go through it and go back a little bit or randomly choose locations from the middle of your collection. You're only requesting the next element in the collection. That's the only way you can interact with it. So that's why it's important to use things like link to filter and interact with it. Now, all collections are I enumerable. You can interact with them and you can go forward through the collection. Not all collections are I queryable. Now, I queryable is a interface that's very similar to I enumerable that allows you to generate, it doesn't actually execute, it doesn't actually interact with and query the data that you're working with, but I queryable allows you to chain onto it these link method names like we're seeing here and execute a query somewhere else that's going to be handed off net doesn't necessarily know how to do it it's going to translate that with some sort of provider and go execute it maybe on a database maybe somewhere else but it will execute that code and return a result that is an i enumerable collection at that point but i queryable isn't executed yet it's it, it's more or less preparing statements to be sent to some other service let me take a look back at chat here and, and scroll through they do have bob ross on twitch 24 7 that's right johnny <laughs> um what is the difference between a list collection and i enumerable so a i enumerable is not implemented it's just that forward only um that forward only definition of interaction. Look, when I implemented I enumerable, all I had to implement was get enumerator. A list allows you to add items to the collection. I can I can add items into my collection. I can remove items from my collection. I can go and add items in the middle of my collection or remove items in the middle of my collection. The list is more random access and the ability to modify your collection, where the I enumerable is just a way for you to read forward only through your collection. Um, do, 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 Let me see here. If you're trying to, if you're looking for a SQL, uh, SQL repository to work with, you can use SQLite locally. There's a SQLite provider that allows you to work with a simple one file database. It's a very common um, tool, SQLite is, very common library used in many, many applications on mobile, uh, web servers, desktop applications to provide a local store of data without having to install a full database system. The tools and techniques that you'll learn, I'm sorry, the programming language and techniques that you'll learn interacting with SQLite translate pretty well to Microsoft SQL, Oracle SQL, uh, DB2, um, MySQL, Postgres, MariaDB. It'll be very similar to what you find in all of those other. iQueryable is more like lazy loading variant of iEnumerable. Pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> would iCoreable run on, say, SQL Server to get data? Asks Jeremy on YouTube. Yes, it would. So the iQueryable, you, it, right, is going to be constructed using Entity Framework and Hibernate, something like that. And when you execute it, when you say to array or single or first, when you execute one of those commands with that, with that iQueryable, it will then be sent to that server, SQL Server, MySQL, whatever it might be, execute over there and return that collection. Yes. All right. Cool. Moving on. So I have my collection now. I have a, a deck of cards called the deck here that we can interact with. So now, now I can start to work with that deck of cards. And we can even put together a, a hand of uh, Texas Hold'em poker. So here's where Link starts to, starts to shine in how we're going to hand out our, our cards for a poker game. So Texas Hold'em, for those of you who aren't familiar, each player, and we're going to allocate three hands for three players in our game, each player gets two cards. There then is a shared set of five cards that are put in the middle of the, in the, middle of the table that all three players get to use to build a, a better hand including the two secret cards that they have that nobody else knows about. So we're going to hand out cards into these three hands. So we, we created, look at this, it's a list. It's another collection that we're going to add to. So hand one, let's add. We're going to reach into the deck of cards. So we created, we took the deck and we shuffled it a couple times here. We're going to reach into the deck. And now here's our first set of link commands. Skip and first. So we're going to skip the first card and take the first card after that, okay? So, um, and, and that's what we're going to allocate. <coughs> Excuse me. Dry throat here. So we have our deck. We're skipping the first card. Take the first card after that, and we're adding it to the first hand. We're going to skip... Then two cards, grab the first, and put it into the, hand, into the hand. Skip three. Now notice, we aren't taking it off the deck, okay? That's why we're skipping one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? So that first card is still on the deck. The, the deck still has 52 cards at the end of this. Now, we, we could remove that card and hand it over so that it's not in both locations, but this is fine for, for what we're trying to show here. And I'm going to display hand one, hand two, and hand three by just using the display command. This is native to .NET Notebooks, and it will display appropriately using, using a collection formatter here what the three hands are. So then we're going to, we're going to burn a card, right? That's that, that's poker lingo for we're going to put a card to the side so that if you if you think you know what that seventh card is, well, we're, we're going to hide that. People might look at what that top card is on the deck, and there, there might be some markings on that that are specific to make sure that nobody cheats and knows what that top card is. We put that to the side, and then we use the next card. So that's called burning a card in poker lingo. So we're going to burn a card and we're going to deal out the flop. Now the flop is the first three cards that you deal out in, in Hold'em. So we're going to skip eight cards because we dealt out six to start, skip the seventh. So we're going to skip eight cards and then we're going to take three. Okay, so we're going to take three cards off. So we're going to have then the next three cards. We've created another collection here. And if I mouse over take, you see, look at this. This is an I enumerable, right? It interacts with an I enumerable, a, a collection like our deck of cards here. And it's going to return an I enumerable, a, a simple collection that is, in this case, those three cards. And we're taking three of them. So you can specify using this skip and take notation, you can specify and build a basic paging mechanism 
for working with your collection. Skip 10, take 10, and it'll take the next page of 10 elements in your collection. Uh, skip 8 here, take 3, and it takes those 3 cards. The, the next card, the fourth card that you deal out to the middle of the table is called the turn in poker lingo. So we'll do the same thing. We dealt out 11, we went through 11 cards here. So we'll skip a card and we'll, we'll skip 12 and we'll take the first, the first card that's on top. We'll grab that and turn that over to show what that card is. And finally, we'll skip 14 cards cards to show the river in poker lingo that's the fifth card that we put on the table so we'll skip 14 and show that 15th card it sounds kind of crazy that in a poker game with three players we go through only 15 cards in a 52 card deck but that's the way it works that's how it is so when we show that interaction now so here's hand one it is a queen of clubs and a ten of diamonds that's not a good hand Next hand is a six of spades and a five of clubs. Not bad. That's that's going to run into some problem here with a five of spades, six of hearts. These two are very similar. Look at that. The flop comes comes out with queen of hearts, four of spades, two of clubs. The fourth card to come out is a four of hearts. So there's a pair there of two fours. And finally, the the last card is a king of diamonds so we've shuffled and we've brought out all of these cards from our collection kind of cool kind of kind of i i hope easy to follow in how all all we're doing is manipulating and walking through that collection and choosing items to display and we did that with just that little bit of link methods those predicate methods of skip take and first so there's other things that we can do there, like order by and where and any and all. We're going to see more about those in just a minute. Let me take a look at chat. I see a bunch of messages have popped in here. Let me take a look here. You have your poker face on. How you doing there, Curious Drive? Anton asks, how does iQueryable deal with concurrency issues? That's up to the runtime that the iQueryable is working with. There's different ways that, that the different runtimes deal with it, and it depends on your provider that you use entity framework caches things aggressively and keeps a uh keeps a row version if you have row version enabled it will do row version concurrency checking with the database before it updates um but there are different ways that that's dealt with on different frameworks with iQueryable so it, at that point, you're not asking about iQueryable. You're asking about the way that Entity Framework or nHibernate or Dapper, how these frameworks work with their data. Um, <laughs> Next week, Fritz shows you how to train the AI to play Next Stop Vegas. I will be in Vegas in December, but no. <laughs> SQLite is amazing. I agree. Paul Watts Coder. I totally agree. Um, uh, Elaine asks, I'm new to C Sharp and I want to learn it. However, I know Java as an Android developer. How much similarity is there? Syntax is very similar. Um, a lot of the collection interaction link is now available in Java, um, but it's a different base class library, different, different objects available. There's th this series, take a look. You, you can see the entire series here, uh, C Sharp with C Sharp Fritz on YouTube, and the uh, the samples are over here on GitHub, C Sharp Fritz slash C Sharp with C Sharp Fritz, tons of samples, and and this guy talking through how to do all of it. Uh, Excel is the most used database in the world. It's 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 true. There are whole businesses that run on just Excel sheets. Um, what's the difference between a hash set and a, an array? A hash set, we we talked about that last time. I'm, um, we're I've got, I, I've got to start um, deferring you over to the video from last time. You can go back and watch that video. Um, so let's see here. No, Excel is a database, folks. Absolutely use Excel as a database. Yes, um, it's not. It's a spreadsheet, but. Is that Python? No, it is not. Coding desires. Um, 
Why are we skipping 8, 12, and 14 cards? I, I spoke through those briefly. Um, because we we want to... We, we skip a card for that poker burn method here. Um, are there any VODs for these tutorials? Yes, check out on the .NET playlist on YouTube. Check out C Sharp with C Sharp Fritz. Um, Nova Troop, that's, that's too far outside discussion for Tay. Um, sorry, I'm... I, Syncing mobile with a with an enterprise database, not something I can get into. Um, hey, welcome, Mike. You want to buy the glasses? Can I give you a link to buy? These are Gunner glasses. Um, I, I saw my eye doctor last week. And um, it, it, one of the first things they said to me, I was, I was having some real hard times with headaches. Um, it turns out I had a wrong contact lens prescription. And uh, one of the first things they asked after checking checking my prescription was what do you do for blue light when you stare at your computer for for so long a day like so many developers like us and the first thing they suggested was do you use the blue light settings and i said no i have a pair of gunner glasses so um full disclosure I, I i do have an influencer relationship with them you can check out my channel twitch.tv slash c sharp fritz there's a gunner label there if you want to get a discount you can click through there and support the channel um, you think the lessons in my channel help to keep being programmers with Microsoft? Oh, uh, thank you, Dolly. Appreciate that. Uh, we'll take a look at CSV in just a little bit here and how we can query and work with that. Um, what do I recommend? A client calls methods supplying skip and take. What's the other? Client calls methods supplying page number and page size. Um... If you supply a page number and page size, you can multiply and get to the appropriate skip and take at that point. So um, I'd be tempted to go with page number and page size being supplied from your client and you have your server side code. Turn that into the appropriate skip and take statements. Um, thank you, Surly Dev, for supplying the link over there. Appreciate that. Um, yes, this example showing skip and take methods. We're going to get into a bunch more. Um, I'm sorry, Rupesh, we just answered that question. Yeah, I'm using the poker game rules as a reason to show those link methods. Exactly. Thank you, Space Shot. Um, and, and just bouncing back and forth and showing those. And we're going to get into more with those and some other funny things we can do interacting. It's not funny. It's different things that you can do interacting with that collection of cards so so that we can cheat because everybody wants to win and i'm no different and i'm a software developer darn it so i know i know the power of the dark side no i know the power of link and how to sort through and find exactly the cards that i want to make the best hand so we're gonna do that and if you saw my stream last time, if you get to where we were talking about cards and collections, um, I started showing some of the some of the poker hands from the movie Rounders, if you've seen that movie, with uh, Matt Damon, and uh, I'm, I'm going to forget his name again, um, John Malkovich. So let's talk about the query syntax. So there is language integrated query. So we've built expressions, these predicates that we've added onto collections to say dot skip, dot take. And that's, those expressions work great when working with objects in memory or generating queryable statements you're gonna send off through entity framework or some other um, object relational mapper. But you can also use query syntax like this. And a lot of folks were mention, mentioning uh, SQL, SQL, the structured query language. This starts to look like SQL. This starts to look like how, for those of us that are familiar with working with relational database, it looks like what we know. We know select star from customers, select star from orders, select name from customers where ID equals 12. We know that syntax. You probably have that burned into your brain how SQL statements work. Well, we can take those statements, turn them a little bit sideways and execute those exact same commands live in our C-sharp code like this. So 
many C sharp developers when they when they do write their query syntax, they like to they like to align the the from and select have these all lined up so that you can see the query lined up nicely in your code. All right, so. We, we turn that syntax sideways, and this is the same syntax that you see in RavenDB. If you've been watching my channel, I've been doing a lot of work with RavenDB. Very similar syntax over there as well. Um, so if I'm gonna select a card from the deck, so I say from card in the deck. So it's using card as an alias for the the deck collection. And I'm going to say select card. So I will select out a card from the deck it's going to give me those values and i execute this and of course i'm going to get 52 cards being reported because i said just select card so you you have to select at the end when you write a query statement like this so that it it defines here's the value that you want to put into the output collection that we're assigning to the out values variable over there let me take a look over here at chat and we'll continue talking about the uh the query fe feature here you have the blue light filter on your regular glasses i was thinking about putting them on my regular glasses as well but decided against it um let me see here um my name is personally welcoming you uh Ace Gikmo is here? Oh yeah? Hey, hello! Good to see you. Oh my goodness. That's one of our live coders teammates. Hello, hello. Uh, hey, Soviet Doge. 99% sure no one uses query syntax by choice, says Tristan over on YouTube. Disagree. Disagree. Um, is using var prefer preferable than using a type definition, than, than specifying the type over here? Well, um, it's all a preference. It's, it's, it's a coding syntax. A lot of fo folks like to use var, and you're gonna wanna use var with this type of syntax here, because um, you, don't, you won't know the specific type that's being returned. Now, right? Um, I can get, I don't want to put type of on that. I, I can get the type from this and I can see it's an innumerable, select innumerable iterator of type cards, right? Let me scroll that up so you can see. There it is. Of, yeah, right? So I could make it an I innumerable of type card and, and work with that. I could do that, right? And there it is, it works. Does that add value though to that? No. Um, so making this var just makes it easier to type. You don't have to think through, well, what type am I returning? And if you change your select statement in the future, you don't have to change the type that you're returning. So gives you flexibility to not have to maintain that other part of your code. And the compiler will just enforce that it's the appropriate type in your further uh, commands that you're interacting with. How's it going there, Freya? Good to see you. Uh, do I prefer link expressions or link methods expressions? Absolutely. Um, yeah, I enumerable car of type card is unpleasant to type. It's just frustrating. Um, so what was the difference between type of and get type? So when you specify get type on an instance type, on an instance variable, it will output, well, here's the type of that variable. Type of, let me comment this out. The type of method will work on a type and give you that. You can't use type of on an instant, on, on an instance variable. So if I try and say that, it doesn't work. That's an error. It's not a type. Type of works on types so that you can you can specify a type name and get that type as a as a type of, uh, as an instance of a oh, here we go of a type variable that you can work with. 
right? So if I pass in string there, now it's a string. Now I can do things with a string at that point and interact with what a string is. So that's what type of is versus get type. And every variable, every uh, uh, instance of, of objects that you have in C Sharp has the get type method on it. So you can get the type of that variable and work with it. Um, Overlord Punk asks, can I tell, can I describe the performance differences from using link versus suit rank? Um, so when you use an array, if I were to use an array here to go through, um, to, to go through the collection, and I, I'm using a collection here, you can only use the, you can only use um, the indexes to go through things if it's, if it's a collection that allows you to have random access to it, right? So you can do the index of to get an object at a specific location, um, right? Or, or what is it, at? I forget the, the exact method. Um, or uh, you're using an array, which will allow you that random access across. So is the array better than link? For the purposes of cards where we have just numbers that we're passing around, it's definitely smaller and you're going to have a smaller memory footprint and a smaller CPU footprint. Yes. Um, link behind the scenes is loops. It is a series of for statements or while statements that you're indirectly calling. It is a bit of syntactical sugar. It is a bit of sugar, a bit of language syntax that makes it easier for us as humans to comprehend how we're working with our code. Now it's been optimized so that it will go through and interact with those collections more quickly. Um, but you can certainly optimize and run things in an array much smaller, faster, but then you've taken control on when you want to write a where statement to filter the data in your collection, or you want to do an order by and sort your collection. You've taken control over that, and that's okay. That might be something that's fine with you, but for a lot of folks, Link runs fast enough, and and they really don't see performance issues because they're choosing to use Link instead of an array with pointers to locations in the array. Um, dynamic keyword, sorry, Mulali, that's... We'll, we're going to have an errata session next week. We can talk about that next week. Uh, what should be the lifetime of a database context? Scoped or st singleton? Scoped. You don't want it to be singleton because you'll you'll end up with collisions with multiple things querying at the same time. I'm not going to talk about records. That's way outside of discussion today. Uh, we had a we had a C sharp nine session. We'll we'll get to that a little bit later on in the uh, in the series here. Sorry, that's too far off topic for today. Um, that action function delegate, too far off topic. Sorry, not going to get there today. Uh, what environment are you use, am I using? This is the, this is Visual Studio Code, and I'm using .NET Interactive Notebooks. If you take a look at the repository that we're working with here, C Sharp with C Sharp Fritz, there is information about .NET Interactive and Notebooks that you can click through and learn more about and present your own notebooks. Um, can we apply link directly to EF Core? Yes. And absolutely, be careful about dismissing link because some perf test shows it is slower. Thank you, Space Shot. Performance tests that show link is slower are running millions of requests to see a half a second difference in performance. You're, you're going to be looking at um, a, a significant, very significant amount of um, code that, uh, I'm sorry, a significant amount of memory and processor that you're working with in order to start to see a performance difference between the two. Remember, the folks that wrote this technology 
are some of the smartest folks in the world at building programming languages. They've been doing this for a while. They've been tuning and optimizing it. Link's been around now for almost 15 years. They know what they're doing and they're not put something, putting something out there that's gonna run slow, okay? Um, let me see here. looking here lambda expression versus queries yes we're gonna get back to that in just a minute here yeah you know what's slower writing all the code manually yep li li and folks link is not slow it, but by any stretch of the imagination link is not slow but when you're talking about things running in single digit milliseconds compared to directly accessing things in memory it is slower. It's not slow, okay? Um, trust me when I tell you there are other parts of your application that you're going to need to optimize for performance before saying, pull out the link code. We want to access memory directly first, okay? There's, you're gonna have other things. We talked about loops two weeks ago. I'm sorry, Mulali. You can take a look at that video and you can catch up on that there about when and how we use those. Okay. Um, exactly, Perry, If even if Link ran slightly slower, there are a lot more other places in your code where you're going to have issues that you're gonna to want to address. Okay, so language integrated query. Excuse me. God, something hair or something in my mouth so if you want to start filtering you're going to want to use and, and you see this in in sql structured query language where and order by clauses so let's say i want to get i want to get just the hearts i'm going to give me just those 13 cards in the hearts suit in our deck of cards so i can say from card in the deck where card dot suit equals h now notice Notice the double equals there, right? Remember, in C sharp, a single equal statement is an assignment operator. So when we want to test for equality, we need to use double equals, okay? We can also use an order by statement. So we have our from, our where filter is next in the order of the statement here. Order by, and then, so we're gonna order by the rank value, okay? So we go, two, three, four, five, six, that's our rank value. We're gonna order that descending. So we end up turning it the other way. Ace, king, queen, jack, nine, uh, 10, nine, eight, blah, blah, blah. And select out those cards. We'll display the results down here. And when I run that, right, so I've, I've performed that where? Filter to just the hearts and order by descending. So there they are. Rank value, rank and suit, they're all hearts. Ace, qu king, queen, jack, blah, 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 all the way down through to two, okay? So we wrote a very simple where clause in there and an order by to order those in the direction we want. And of course, if I take the descending um, direction off of that, by default, it's sorted ascending. You can explicitly declare ascending if you would like, and it will, of course, sort ascending if that's the direction you want it. But by default, you typically won't find .NET developers using the ascending keyword. They'll just omit it and only include a keyword when they want to flip the order to descending, okay? So descending, highest value first, so. Um, don't know which way to go. Study .NET Core or .NET Framework. Uh, learn .NET Core. Actually, .NET 5, .NET 6 now. Um, so uh, .NET Core evolved to become .NET 5. The next version, .NET 6, is being released in November as part of .NET Conf. I hope you tune in and join me for .NET Conf. I'll be hosting that event. We have 80 sessions, two attendee parties for you to tune in and watch. You might even win. You might even win some cool swag. Check it out in November. Uh, I hope you join me then. .netconf.net. www.netconf.net. And you can 
check that out. That's like saying the F1 car from Red Bull team is slower than the Ferrari team. That's right. The, the, the Red Bull car is slower than the Ferrari. But, I mean, they're still going 200 miles an hour. It's slower. Yes, that's right. This one went, it finished the race in in five hours. And the other, and the second car, the, the Red Bull car finished in four hour, in, in five hours and 30 seconds. It's slower. But it's still going 200 miles an hour. So. Um, so. Uh, two, 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 two. Um, where where do I recommend learning.net? You're looking at it. Um, how to work with type conversions. Um, ooh, deferred execution and lazy evaluation. Let me let me put that on the to-do list for next week. That's a good topic. I, I, I've got about a half hour left here. Don't want to get into that today. I'm sorry, but let me talk about that in the errata uh, episode next week. Next week, we're going to talk about pretty much it's an errata episode. All the questions will be on the table. Um, I've got a, a bunch of samples that we'll go through. I've got some more samples I need to add into the notebook. Where we're going to cover, there was collect the questions about immutable collections, concurrent collections. I'll put deferred execution, lazy evaluation in there as well, and we'll talk more about them. Is there a link statement to create database for a particular username? I that's not quite what you're looking for. You don't want to create a database. Uh, create to query a database for a particular loser username. Sure, and you would do a where statement like this. Absolutely. Some folks like to over-optimize for performance ahead of time. And that's absolutely a thing that we as developers sometimes are very guilty of. Over-optimizing for performance um, at the very beginning of writing an application. Get it working. Get your system working. Get that website outputting and giving folks the cool experience that you want. Then make it faster. Get it working. Get it faster then make it look nice so all right let's move on and so we can change our query here a little bit so this time let's go through and we can use our select statement just like we do in in sql we can use it to project and and change the shape of what we're outputting right you, you may be doing select star from from your orders table in a database or select star from customers to say well just give me the entire uh record from the the customers table but maybe i just want the name right so select name from customers will give you just the name you've changed the shape of the output from the database we can do the same thing with our query syntax here. So from card in deck, I'll put a where clause on here, where card dot suit, where it's a heart, and where the rank value is greater than 10. So I want the face cards. I can say select card dot rank, right? And to be sure, these are all the properties on my card object. Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio, Visual Studio for Mac, the various development tools that are available to work with .NET all give you this IntelliCode, this IntelliSense experience where it'll show you here are the properties of that object that you want to work with. So I want to output the rank. Show me the rank value of those cards and it gives me in return, right, the Queen, Jack, Ace, King. That's the order that they're in the deck. Okay. So they're, they're clearly not in highest rank order, but I've selected out just the rank. Now notice, not only did it give me the value of the rank, right? Because when it selected out rank, rank is just a string. There it is right there, it's just a string. So I'm returning a collection of strings. It's not a rank property, it's a value. Also, uh, the notebook, gives me the index so I can see a counter of here's the order that it appears inside that output collection. So. How's it going there, Victor Composes? Hello. 
Um, how to get rid of a set of all red cards sorted first in all diamonds, then all in hearts. Each category sorted descending. Ooh, Frank with a really cool kind of question of a, a, a programmatic challenge there of, well, I want to get just the red cards, uh, diamonds first, then hearts, and sorted descending. So let's let's take Frank's challenge here. Let's let's do that real quick. So if I want just the red cards, well the red cards are the hearts and diamonds. So I could say where card suit equals hearts or card dot suit equals diamonds. And I want to make sure that I get well I, I'm I'm gonna return all of the values. Um, and I want to make sure that I get, uh, what was it? We want diamonds, then hearts. Okay, so we can say, um, right, order by. Notice it's one word, order by. And I can specify multiple order bys here. So I want to say, um, we wanted diamonds first. So I will say order by uh, card dot suit. Um, and I'm going to specify ascending. Because D before H, diamonds before hearts. Um, and I'll specify then a second uh, criteria here. So we wanted to order then by uh, category descending. Okay, so we'll say by rank value descending. And now, uh, let's not just give me the rank. Give me the entire card. Right? So we've applied this filter. So now I get my all of the diamond cards and then I get all of the heart cards and they're sorted by the rank value descending okay so there's how you would build that little query so that you get all the diamonds then all the hearts all right um, we'll talk about joins in a little bit here uh, I prefer arrow notation that's my preference um, you can reduce to only three allocations if you rewrite the entire app. Go ahead. Um, hey, Smab. Yes, errata covers errors I've made. It, it also covers things that we missed. So go back and we we fill in and, and take care of some things. Um, <laughs> Space Shot, I agree. Optimization is great. Get great performance metrics into your application so you can see where to optimize. Yes. Um, are correlated subqueries supported in link? Yes. Um, have no idea why I skipped items because I'm trying to focus on getting the beginner simple things. How to select more properties? Sure, if you want to select more properties. So let's say we wanted to select here from, from the sample here. Um, if I wanted to select... Right, not just the rank, but I also wanted to select uh, the suit. Well, you can't say rank suit. See, select statements don't work like that. If you want to return more values, more properties, you actually need to return an object. And that's called a projection. So we can project by creating an anonymous type here. And now, Remember when we had the question about using var over here? And well, why wouldn't you just use i enumerable of type string as the way I previously had it? By, by changing my projection here, because I want to return the rank and the suit. Um, I need a semicolon at the end of that. It now gives me the rank and the suit only. I've selected out a new type, an anonymous type that I've declared and I've specified right here. This way, right, I, I can change the shape of my output so it, it meets what I need in my further interactions with code. This is another way for you to minimize the amount of allocations, the, the size and shape of the objects you're working with in your application. Yes, this is .NET Interactive Notebooks. Um, we're not, yeah, async isn't something that, that we're going to talk about. It's a little bit more advanced than, than we want to get into today. I want to focus on just these beginner topics. We'll talk about async in another stream coming up. And async enumerable is something we'll definitely cover. 
Um, so. When can I think in link rather than querying the database directly? Um, asks Henri um, on YouTube. When you have data in memory, when you have your data in memory, like this deck of cards that I have, my data is in memory so I can think all in link. Um, when you're using Entity Framework in Hibernate, Dapper, those various object relational mappers, um, you're, even though you're writing link, when it finally executes, it's reaching out to the database and interacting with it. And I do need an Entity Framework section. So, how did I create the deck parameters? It's up higher in the notebook. We covered that at the beginning of the stream. Um, all right. So, the next topic is joins. So you can correlate collections and, and join is something that I, I personally struggle with in my coding. Um, it's kind of tricky to work with, but you can join um, between two collections so you can correlate those objects in the collection. So we're gonna use the pets sample here. So we have a, a class named person and we'll have a class named pet the pet has a name and it has an owner. So we're gonna specify a couple folks here. So we have Magnus, Terry, and Charlotte. And we're gonna specify the four pets and who their owners are. So we have Barley, we have Boots, we have Whiskers, and we have Daisy and who their specific owners are over here. This is a sample that comes right out of the .NET documentation. So now when we have this criteria, we have this requirement to create a list of person pet pairs where each element is a type that contains a pet's name and the, the name of their owner. So we do a join and we use this syntax. Let me put a carriage return in here so that it's a little bit easier to see that with, with this guy over here. All right, so my query, I'm gonna take my people, right? I'm gonna take my people collection that I defined up here, right? There's my people collection. And I'm gonna take my pets collection and I'm going to join them. So I say people.join, right? And this is using link to object syntax. Join, and I'm gonna join the pets. So person is person, right? We'll match the person object. We're gonna take the pet and we're gonna match it to the owner object, the owner property. And the combined output is, we're gonna have an owner name property that is the name of the person, and we're gonna output the name of the pet. So when we run this query, we get Magnus owns Daisy, Terry owns Barley and Boots, and Charlotte owns Whiskers. So we've joined data together. There is a join syntax you can use with the with the language query. I I don't like using it. Even the join query here, this syntax is a little little messy. Um, and and I prefer to do that type of work in on the server, so that I'm only working with one collection in memory. Is it possible to share the agenda for upcoming sessions? Uh, take a look in here. We're going to be going through the notebooks. So I have my errata here where we're going to cover a handful of different things. We're going to talk about interfaces and error handling, dependency injection. I think I need to stick an entity framework session in here. Um, all of the sessions are over here that work outside. We'll talk about unit tests, C Sharp 9. There's Entity Framework Core. We'll talk about Entity Framework Core um, a little bit later on, and I'll, I'll drop an async session in here as well. I'm not quite sure where, but it'll get into the mix there. Um, map filter reduce, it, it select where and aggregate. Yep, yep. What about left join? Um, I don't think you can do left joins with this. Not in memory like that. Store procedures are faster? No, they're not. They're the same. Any performance benefits for Link EF Core in .NET 6 comparing with .NET 5? Yes. They actually, with 
uh, Entity Framework Core in .NET 6, they generate all of it. They, when you compile your application, they actually generate um, code that runs faster for all of things. Instead of having to go and do and derive the various data types, they generate a bunch of code for you to interact with. But Entity Framework Core, the code that it generates is as fast as a stored procedure. Now, if your database administrator optimizes your stored procedures, that, that's a different ball of wax. That you, that's a different discussion. But if you write the same code in a stored procedure, it works the same. It, it has, should have the same performance. Now we can group data together with the group clause. So we can say, well, let's take our deck of cards again and let's group the cards by the suit. Now, that's gonna give us, I believe it's a key value um, output that will show you here's what we grouped by and those items that are in that group. So when we group by suit, look, we get a grouped, grouped enumerable, right? That is a card and a string, right? It's a, so take a look at this. So index zero, and we have all these cards, right? Because we grouped by suit, these are these are all the spades, um, right? Does this go across? No, no, it's just that, yeah. Um, there's my clubs, there is diamonds, and there is hearts, okay? They're grouped by those. Now, if we, return all the cards grouped by suits and if we want to select the suit and create a grouped result we can expand the query a little bit and say select new the suit equals suit dot key look at that right there so we're grouping card by card suit right so from card in deck so we're grabbing that card object that's in the deck collection we're grouping it by suit and we're going to call the name of that grouping a suit so now we're going to project, we're going to change the shape of the output. We're going to say select new. We're going to create a property called the suit. And it's going to be the key to this grouping. Select, show me that the, the key value to that grouping. And then show me what the whole suit object is. Now when we look at this, look at, look at that type. You, you don't want to put that instead of a var. This is why you want a var statement. Look at that thing. What? Look at this! It's disgusting. I don't want to touch this. But, when I look at the grouping now, now I have a the suit property. Look, and, and it's over here. We have, right, suit is all of the cards in that collection. So, there's my spades, clubs, diamonds, and hearts. All right. So we're creating these anonymous types, right? This is a type that C Sharp is creating on the fly for us that contains just the shape that we want to work with. This is a pretty powerful topic because the runtime is creating that type for us on the fly as we interact with our data. The collections that we're working with are a different shape, but we're getting now content, classes, objects to work with in our code that are exactly the shape, the, the size that we want. That's pretty important. That's a pretty powerful topic that, and, and feature that you can use here. Um, let me cover this, I believe, last couple bits here about grouping. We can put some other calculations in there. So group by card into right by by rank value greater than 10 so we, we've effectively put a where clause in here into face cards so right now right now i have here's my diamonds and i've got rank value rank suit for each one of them and the suit is true right so uh, look at these. These are all over the place. Look, queen, uh, this is a spade, this is a diamond, this is a heart, diamond, but these are all where they're face cards, right? And these are the ones 
where they're the rank number cards. So we've grouped them not by one of the properties, but by whether or not it's true or false on that where statement, right? So now, right, if I did it with a where clause and then did the grouping, right, now I get, here's the face cards, queen, king, jack, ace, and each one of the cards in each one of uh, the suits next to it over here. So different ways that you can work with the grouping and interact with it. We've got about 13 minutes left here. We're just about at the end of the samples. Let me take a look at chat. <sighs> yeah, zip. Zip is one that I'm, I, I don't like to cover because it's not quite as used. Um, var does not equal dynamic. That is correct. Var is just an implicit typing based on what's to the right. And then it's strong type for the rest. Um, link versus store procedures when working with big, huge collections of data, which is preferable. It depends. Sorry, can't answer that. Um, I, I would, I would lean towards a stored procedure because then my database administrator, when I'm working with a huge collection of data, you better have somebody whose job it is to manage the database. They can optimize that independent of your code you delivered in your application. Um, how can you count the number of items in each group? Um, I believe, is it? Yeah, it was right there. Uh, simple name remember yeah why don't you like that into face cards face cards dot uh, oh right rank right no hang on face cards is that so I should be able to say yeah face cards dot count and that should have given me what don't you like there? I for, I'm blanking on the syntax here. Um, because that that is a collection. And it... Yeah. It's not a, the method group. Uh, no, not giving me the length. There is a way to do this. And I'm... Oh, wait, 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 wait. I didn't specify a name. There it is. I forgot to specify a name. You always have to have a name to your field. And when you start putting methods on the end here like this, let me put a carriage return so you can see it. When you start putting methods on there, you're changing the name of the field. So you need to specify a name there. So that'll give you the count. And that gives you the entire collection. Um... Yeah, you're right, Chris. You are correct. Min and max, they only appear in .NET. No, they do not only appear in .NET 6. Right? Um, right, I can say dot .min. Uh, oh, it's... I'm in JavaScript syntax there. Equals. Um, I need to do face cards. I need to do a... I need to specify what it is. Uh, 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 rank value. There you go. So, same thing with max. So, those aggregate types of functions you can do there similarly. Alright. Uh, come here, you. There we go. All right. So now let's talk about loading data from CSVs. Um, so you can do, I, I just did I enumerable against the type of class. You have to specify the property you want to sort by in order to do min and max. How about pivot? Uh, we don't have a pivot. Alright, so 
we can load data from CSV and, and work with that, not just connect with Entity Framework out to a database, but we can use a CSV, a comma-separated value file, right, a spreadsheet that's saved to disk. So I'm going to use the link to CSV NuGet package, and I, I have a special command that we have in, in .NET Notebooks, this hash R says require this NuGet package and it's linked to CSV. You can click that link and go learn more about that package. But I loaded the Atlantic hurricane season data from Wikipedia. I saved that to disk. If you look in the folder here, there's a data folder and there's my information about the hurricanes in the Atlantic Ocean for years and years, right? Um, all the way up to 2020, okay? So, I can query that data over here. So, I'll add a using statement for my, this link to CSV uh, package. This is another runtime that I can use. It's a provider that allows me to query data that's being loaded from that CSV file. I specify a, a shape of what that what that CSV, what that document looks like. So I created this class called My Data Row that has the year, the tropical storm count, the hurricane count, the major hurricane count, the ACE, the accumulated cyclone energy. Unfortunately, the number of deaths, the, the name of the strongest storm, the damage calculated in US dollars, names that were retired at the end of that season, and any notes that were provided. So, in order to work with this data, let me put let me put some more character returns in here so it becomes easier to see what's going on. Um, come here, mouse. So, yeah, look at this. All right. Come here, make this a lot easier to see. So, I'm creating a new CSV description. It has a comma as a separator character. There are column names in the front first row. We're gonna create this CSV context that comes out of that link to CSV package. And I'm going to load all of that data from my that CSV file I have on disk into data rows, my data row. And then I'm going to display and, and look at, right, I'm doing a query here to say, well, show me order by most recent year, order by descending by year, so most recent year, give me the top 10, the most 10, the 10 most recent years, and show me this block of information. And when I run that, check it out, installing packages. It's installing that link to CSV package, and oh no. Where, wow, um, why can't we get to, are you kidding me? Um, do I have a, do I have, one second, let's see if we can fix this real quick. Um, I do not have, I do have a NuGet config. Um, let's skip the rest of these. Yeah. I don't think we need the rest of these anymore. Um, let me save. I don't want to delete the cell. Um, do I need to close this and reopen it? Let's do that. Installing packages. There we go. All right, so there is my 10 most recent hurricane seasons, okay? Along with the tropical storm count, hurricane count, 
and the strongest storm. Now, of course, I can turn this around and right because now I know how to use link. I know some of these statements. Not only do I have an order by descending, I also have an order by statement if I want it ordered by uh, earliest. So these are the earliest records that we have from 1950 on to 1959, the 10 earliest records that we have. And of course, right, I know how to interact because I am a fancy .NET developer. I can go through here now and say, well, order by descending, show me the most expensive um, hurricanes that are out here. So order by descending, we see that Tropical Storm Emily in 1987, then Tropical Storm Opal, and uh, Hurricane Joaquin in 2015, and so on and so forth. So we've run link statements against a spreadsheet that was saved on disk, queried and interacted with it, and this is a great way for, for us to be able to work with data that isn't in a database. It's somewhere we're able to query it and work with it. Now, the last bit that I had here was extension methods. I have two minutes to go. I am going to leave this to you to be able to read through, but an extension method is, is quite simply a way for you to bolt on to add a method syntax to an existing object. And you can take a look and you can read more about this. I'll cover it a little bit more next week. I am just about out of time here, friends. We have two minutes to go. I want to make sure I answer any last questions that we have coming in from folks in chat. Back over here. Ah, all right. Um, thank you. I'm glad you like the background music. Taking a look here. All right. So, uh, discussion on min and max. Next topic, next week, we're going to be covering some errata. We're going to go back and cover some things that I missed. Um, some things that, that folks have asked questions about. It's really, the, the purpose of the next session is really a hodgepodge. It's a collection to talk about anything that we may have missed that we want to make sure we discuss. Increment and assignment operators, logical negation operator, type of, get type, name of methods, string formatting, um, little, going a little bit deeper on enums, classes versus structs, um, stopping, skipping loops, initializing collections, constants, static. What does that mean? And we'll touch a little bit on immutable and concurrent collections was brought up as well. So I do not cover Microsoft SQL in, in these tutorials because this is C Sharp. We're covering C Sharp and .NET programming languages. The folks from the database team, um, I don't think they have any tutorials out about how to use SQL Server. So um, thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. If you're watching over on Learn TV, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Those of you watching on YouTube, of course, this video is recorded. It'll be available over on YouTube. Um, as soon as we stop here, you'll find it over there. I need to go and reformat some of the data because the original video that we tried to re broadcast didn't catch and, and start broadcasting properly and those of you that are watching on twitch i hope you are having a very good day over on the twitch streaming platform um in fact i think it's time we set up a raid for those of you that are watching on twitch oh yeah let me take a look at who else is streaming on the big twitch tv network and who we can raid, who else is out there talking about tech content that would be fun to join. Fun to hang Are you kidding me? Do I, do I have that right? You know what? There is a hackathon going on right now over on the Microsoft Developer Channel. Um, yeah, they're talking about IoT topics. So let's send you over to the Microsoft Developer Channel. And if you're watching on Twitch, you don't have to do anything. Sit back. You're going to go join them and, and learn a little bit about IoT. 
I hope you join me tomorrow. I'll be back over on my channel, twitch.tv slash C Sharp Fritz. We'll be talking more about Blazor, more about Azure, and some of the cool things that you can do with, with Blazor on Azure. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in, whether you're on YouTube, you're on Twitch, or if you were on Learn TV. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Take care.